Reggie, you've probably caught more passes this summer from Jordan than anybody. Where have you seen his game progress? Uh, in his reads, he's a lot quicker, uh, uh, recognizing defenses. Uh, he understands where his receivers are supposed to be. Uh, and honestly, he does his job, and he does it. he's doing it good. How are things different for you here in year two? Uh, year two, I'm more fluent. I can actually run a lot faster uh, without thinking. I can play football instead of just, you know, trying to run lines on paper. When did that come to you, Dad? Uh, just a year in the system, uh, you know, having it during the off season. You know, you, you take good notes and you practice and you go out there and, and you constantly rep routes. That's the only way you can really get good at it if you, if you keep doing it over and over and over again. And, and that's, that was an emphasis for me. And coming here, it showed up. Reggie, we we obviously know the road you, you took to get here to Green Bay. Was there a, a, a point last year, or you, even if that point's happened yet, where you started to feel like you really belonged in the NFL? Um, um, there is always self doubt every now and then, but uh, you 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 have to attack you know everything mentally in a positive note. Um, you will hit a wall, but. With the training that, that you do uh, outside of the physical training, you have to train your mind. Uh, you have to get over that hump. So uh, it, you, everybody hits it, and it's all about who can hit it. And it hit me during uh, camp last year uh, with COVID protocols and everything. Everything was a lot more business. It was a lot more strict. Uh, I felt like uh, you know you was in a in a bottle. So it, it was hard to to really let loose, but. Once you calm down and, and, and realize your purpose of why you're here, you start to really believe in yourself and you control what you can control because at the end of the day, that's all you can do. You go out there and perform. Hey, Reggie, how many of you in the, kind of the room, um, you know, there's a lot of guys you know, that are veterans coming back. There's a big crowd buying for just a couple spots. How do you see all that? Well, the way I look at it, it's, it's actually fun. Uh, if, if it was easy, I mean, would you really enjoy the process, especially when you come out successful at the end? Uh, I'm, I'm treating it, I mean, yeah, you could say I'm behind the eight ball, but I'm not looking at it that way. I'm going out there, I'm, I'm doing what I can do, I know what I can do, and, and I'm trying to take advantage of every opportunity that I personally can get. So I'm making this fun. I know it's a competitive room, and like I said, at the end of the day, it's, it's just fun. You didn't have preseason games last year. Having those this year, does that give you a chance to peek out from behind the eight ball a little bit? Uh, it, it does, uh, but at the end of the day, like, you have to take every day for what it is. Uh, so today, I'm, t I'm attacking today. The preseason, first preseason game is Saturday. I have a practice tomorrow. I have to worry about that day. I can't look too far ahead because when you start doing that, you, you end up putting so much pressure on yourself that you know, you're, you're not focused on that day. You, you too, you're looking too far ahead. Hey, Reggie, last year, what did that do for I mean, I'm sure you want to be on the 53. That's the goal of everybody. But being able to go start to finish on the practice squad, in terms of just as a player, understanding you know, the NFL system, how, how much do you think that helped you having that full season here with Green Bay? It helps. It also helps that I'm a little bit of an older guy because I understand what kind of discipline it takes uh, week in and week out to, to actually stay in that position. I understand that you know being on practice squad is a week-to-week -week employee and that Every day is an evaluation. So you have to do the little things. You have to do everything right. And um, in the process, you have to constantly keep growing. So like, like how I was explaining earlier, you take every day for what it is. And I'm trying to get 1% better every day, even if it's just a little bit. That's all you need. Do you feel like a leader in that room since I think, if I'm not mistaken, you're the second oldest guy behind Devontae? Uh, I'm not necessarily uh, one of the vocal guys just yet, just because I haven't been in the system. Uh, I'm actually still learning from even the younger guys that are in there because they've been in the system. So uh, I can't say I'm really one of the leaders, but they can see that you know I, I, I know what I'm doing. So. How do you ignore the depth chart? Excuse me? How do you ignore the depth chart? Um, it's a business. It's, a, it's, it's fluent, and it's something that I personally can't control. So that's something I can't stress about. I have to water my own lawn. I have to go out there and perform. And hopefully what I personally do is enough that will bring me on top. Have you ever taken a moment to sit back and realize that you've accomplished? I mean, obviously, like, like Matt mentioned, we, we all know your path, and it's a hell of a path of perseverance. Have you ever taken a moment to kind of smell the poses, so to speak? I did. I did uh, when it happened. Immediately after it happened, then I had to get back to work. Because I understand that's not where I wanted to be. That's not where I wanted my legacy to end. So in order for me to do that, yes, I celebrated. 
And yes, like every now and then I, I look back at my film and I smile, but at the same time, I'm like, okay, I need to work harder now to get back to that point. I'm here, I'm here in the NFL. I'm here in the Green Bay Packers. This is my journey right now. Hey, Reggie, getting back to Rob's question earlier about you know your connection with Jordan, uh, do you kind of feel that? Have you kind of had that going back either with the scout team or just this summer being able to, to kind of get on that same wavelength with him? Uh, yes, I mean, just him being able to get the reps and seeing the different styles of receivers that he have, he's, he's getting more comfortable with the way each of us run routes. Uh, not everybody runs the routes the same way. Everybody has their little quirks. Uh, that's what makes you the type of receiver that you are. And he's starting to learn uh, what type of receivers we are, and he expects us to be to do be able to do our job and get open, and we'll be in that space. Reggie West mentioned the benefit of you just being here all year last year on the practice squad, but you did get a little bit of a taste of it, right? Was it the Atlanta game? If it I'm was mistaken. Mm -hmm. um, how much did you savor? You know, I know it was only one game. What was that week? I don't know, four or five. I think it was week four. I actually uh, <laughs> I got on the field, did warm ups and everything, and I was just. I was just smiling my butt off the whole time. Like I was like, "Oh my gosh!" Like, like th this, this is it. Like that's when I really found out. Like I really made it. That's when I felt it. But like I said, it's short lived because this is a business. I do have a job, and I have to get back focused and and realize that like you, you can't you can't dwell on the small wins. You you have more to accomplish. Uh, when did they tell you you're going to be out for that game? Do you remember what your reaction was? Uh, it was it was hinting towards the week that I might be up, uh, but I, I the way I go in practice and train, I, I, I'm up every week because you just never know. It could, it could be a day, it could be hours before the game. You you, you don't know. So it's it's you, you have to train yourself. You have to be prepared. Like I mentioned before, every day is evaluation, so you can't treat it like it's just practice. It's it's not. You know, uh, you know, game uh, preparation equals game reality. So you go you go there and. You practice as if you're playing a game all the time. It will eventually carry over. You'll be comfortable, and everything will be so much slower because that's the way you practice all the time. As much as we're asking about receiver and your connection with Jordan, how important are special teams going to be? Uh, special teams are, is very important, especially for a guy in my position. Um, it's, it's been an emphasis for me. Uh, I, I know that coming in. I'm, I'm, you know, me being an older person again. Like I, I know what it takes to actually be here. So I'm not taking any of the drills lightly, I'm, I'm going in and trying to win a job at the end of the day. When you're training in the offseason, you do routes as a receiver and, and those sort of – how do you train for special teams? Is there Honestly, teams? like uh, on Wednesdays, I did a – more or less a applied metrics day where there's a lot of change in position, uh, change, in, change in direction. Uh, it's the same as special teams, you know, uh, explosion and, and just, just angles. Just being able to run angles backwards, sideways, and everything like that. Typically, typically what receivers don't do. <laughs> so you, 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 it's part of training to be an athlete at the end of the day. A couple more. Reggie, I, I want to make sure I get this right. This is what you, I think you told me last summer. You're going to get defeated. You only fail when you stop trying. I refuse to accept failure. How do you maintain that mindset when you're 27, grinding away on the practice squad, wondering if, if that chance is ever going to come? Uh, you remember what, what what got you here, honestly, and and on, and also it's talking to others who who've been through the process or listening to podcasts, listening to real world people that actually have you know real struggles and everything. You know, some people see football as only a sport, and you know we're here to play football, and we're not really hitting real life adversity, but. It all intertwines if, if you, it's all perspective. It's all perspective. But if you can understand and listen to what other people are going through, you realize like you can't feel sorry for yourself. You can't. So I have to go out there every day, and this is an opportunity that, that not too many people get. So I need to take advantage of it.